Good evening, everybody. Are y'all excited to be back in the Lord's house tonight? Amen. How many of you believe that we serve a God who is both the lion and the lamb tonight? Amen. Y'all go ahead and stand and sing with us. He's coming on the clouds. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. And every chain will break as broken hearts declare his praise. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power.
praise in this house. Lord, we thank you that every knee is going to bow and every tongue will confess that you are the one true king. Lord, all those that stand and laugh in our face whenever we proclaim that you are our healer, when we proclaim that we believe that you are still in control, all of those will come to know that you are the one true king. But in the time that we have on this earth, in the morning when we rise, would you give us, Jesus, throughout this life, and every step that we take, every struggle that we face, all we need is Jesus. Just to whisper that name, give me Jesus.
Just to thank him for who he is. I know that we came into this place tonight and we have a hundred different things on our mind, thinking about what we have to do tomorrow, thinking about dinner when we leave, thinking about all the things that are weighing us down, all the things that we've done wrong, all the things of this flesh. But will you take just a moment? Just close your eyes. And just begin to thank God. And if you're in a place, because I've been there, where you feel like you don't have anything to thank Him for, thank Him for the ability to breathe. Thank Him for the ability to speak. Thank Him for the ability to stand. Thank Him for the ability to be here. All of those things are miracles. All of those things are things that we do not deserve. We don't deserve to have life. We don't deserve to have His breath in our lungs. But because of His never-ending love and grace, we can have His breath. Lord, we take this time to thank You for who You are, to say that You deserve the glory. You are great. Lord, you do miracles over and over, time and time again. And you deserve all the praise.
Come on, that's who he is. That's who he's wanting to show himself to be to you tonight. Lift your hands all over this sanctuary and say, Lord, you are my way maker. You are my light in the darkness. Lord, you are my miracle worker. Lord, you're my promise keeper.
Somebody give the Lord some praise. I wonder tonight before I get ready. Come on, who needs a miracle worker in this place? Come on, who needs the light in the darkness? Who needs the promise keeper? Glory to God. I'm going to tell you, God is a deliverer. He's everything you need Him to be. Praise God. While you're standing tonight, I want you to go with me to the book of Psalms. Psalms 121. Psalms 121, just eight verses, but there is a lot in these verses. Glory to God. Psalms 121. Praise God. <laughs> Word of God says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. I want to minister tonight on the subject, hang on, help is coming. Hang on, help is coming. Look at your neighbor and say, help is coming. Hang on, help is coming. Praise God. Stretch your hands this way and let us pray one more time. Father, Lord, as we humbly come before your presence, we give you praise, we give you glory and honor. Lord, I want to ask you tonight, Lord, to anoint this body of mine. Father, it, it has its moments of frailty. Lord, now I need your strength, dear God. Father, I need you to touch my voice. Lord, let it be plain and powerful. Lord, tonight, Father, and I pray that this word would not return unto you void, but Lord, accomplish what you sent it to do. So, Father, I'm asking you to hide me behind the cross and bury me in the blood tonight. Father, that I might not be seen but you. Father, I pray, God, that you would come through me. Holy Spirit, have your way in this service. Uh, Lord, I pray tonight for those that are going through any kind of trouble, Lord, that they will hear this word, Lord, and their faith would increase and they would hang on because they know you are on the way. And Father, we'll give you the praise, the glory, the honor for it all in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. 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 Glory to God. Look at somebody else and tell them, hang on. Help is coming. Yeah. Glory to God. The introduction, when you look at this psalm, the introduction tells us that it's a song. When you look in the King James, it's a song of degrees. Here in the New King James, it says a song of ascents. Glory to God. And what that means is that this is a song that worshipers would sing, amen, as they made their way to Jerusalem to, to participate in the three great annual feasts, Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles. And this is what's called a pilgrim's song. Glory to God. It tells of the dangers of the journey and of the help God provides along the way. You see, when you look at verse 1, and everybody, I believe, at one time or another has misquoted this verse. Glory to God, because how many of have ever quoted this verse? I will look to the hills from which cometh my help. Your help don't come from the hills. You see, verse 1 is a declaration. It's not a declaration of hope, but rather it's a cry for despair. You see, the psalmist is telling us that danger is lurking in the hills above us and is waiting for an opportunity to pounce upon the weary traveler. But glory to God, this is what he's asking here. Where can the pilgrim turn for help? I can't turn to the hills. I can't turn to an individual. I can't turn them to the government. I can't turn to my friend. I can't turn to my family from time to time. I can't turn even to my enemies. I can't turn here, there, or another. Glory to God. But the psalmist answers his own question by reminding us that the Lord is our help. Praise God. 
You see, we may not find it in this world, glory to God, uh, from individuals or materialistic things. Uh, but thanks be to God, oh, I will look to the hills. Uh, I'll look out for that danger. I'll look out for that despair. I'll look out for that discouragement. I will look out for the things uh, that are looking to take uh, my joy away from me. Uh, but in the process, uh, I'm still going to be looking for my help uh, because I know there's some help uh, around here. But I know where it comes from. And my help comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, can I tell you and can I remind you today that you and I are pilgrims and strangers just passing through this land? Praise God. And our pilgrimage began the very moment that we received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And I want to tell you, it's going to continue until we step out of this life and into eternity. You see what glories awaits when we finally get home. But along the way, however, there are dangers around every corner. Praise God. You see, there are thieves that would rob us of our peace, joy, and victory. There are sins, Lord, that would quench the fire of God in our souls. There are problems that would strip us of our glory and the power of God. See, you say, I don't know about you all, but I've been through some difficult times. Can you just wave at me if you've been through some difficult time? We all have. We all share that in common. Your difficulty may be different than mine, but it's difficult nonetheless. Lord God, and there may be some of you sitting in here tonight that may be in that very condition. You may be in a very difficult time. And if you are, allow me to encourage you with this word of God. And if you're struggling or you're just aware, Lord God, that problems might be just around the next corner, then I want to tell you this song is for you. I've come to tell you, hang on, help is coming. Praise God. Oh, and I like the way that the psalmist breaks this, these eight verses down. He puts it into three categories. Glory to God. First of all, he tells us about the source of our help. How many of you know that we have a source of help? Amen. David says here, we have a source. Glory to God. In verses 2 through 4, he said, My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. What are you talking about? I'm telling you, let me tell you the first thing about the, our source. Lord God, the first thing about our source is this. He is the creator. Now, there is nobody beyond him. Oh, I, I like that thought right there. That amen, the devil ain't higher than our God. Come on now. Praise God, there is no one that is bigger than our He is a creator, praise God. The word of God said it right there. Who made heaven and earth. Can I tell you right now, if he made heaven and earth, can I tell you, he's got it. Whatever's going on in your life. Ooh, but help many of us fret, pout, get down, sing that old hee-haw blues song, woe is me, gloom, despair, and agony on me, deep, dark, oh boy, y'all know it, glory to God. <laughs> We've all sung it at one point or another. But I want to tell you, in that same breath, where we're sitting there and we're agonizing over what we're going through, what we need to remember when we're singing the blues, we're forgetting who our creator is. We're forgetting how big God is. He made this thing that you're saying. He's, oh, come on. He made this thing that we live on called the earth. Hey, come on, my Lord. He made the land. He made the sea. And he separated. He made the light and he made the darkness and he separated. My God, he made all the animals. Well, put them in where, where they're supposed to be. Then he took dust and he put it in a pile and made man and breathed into his nostrils. I'm going to tell you, we got a creator who made everything and he can take care of whatever's going on in our life. Woo!
Yeah, y'all preach me hard on Sunday night. <laughs> you see, the psalmist knew that his help was not coming from the hills. Oh, no, you got to My help's not coming from the creation. It's coming from the creator. <laughs> you see, there comes a time, folks, when we got to look a little bit higher. Woo! See, we get so much garbage in front of our face. We get so many problems in front of our face. Oh, and they seem to be combating us and coming against us all at one time and hitting us and putting us down. I want to tell you the Word of God says that there comes a time when you got to lift your eyes above the trouble and you got to look unto Jesus who is the author and the finisher of your faith. My God, if you'll look, come on, what is in front of you and what is coming on you is under His feet. You see, the psalmist knew that the real source of his help was Almighty God. So you see, he isn't referring to a friend or an ally, but the, to the creator of the universe. You see, the idea is this. If God can make the world, then he has the power to take care of me. Ephesians, 20, Ephesians 3 and 20. Now unto him. That is able. I wish somebody would say able. Do you know? Are you persuaded like Paul that he is able now unto him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you ask or think? My Lord, he's able. He has the power to help you. Why? Because he's the creator. But not only did this... Did the psalmist say that our source was the creator? But he also said, listen, my source is my confirmer. What are you talking about, Pastor? Look at what he said there. Glory to God. You got to understand, in the King James, the word is slipped. In the New King James, the word is moved. Look at what he said there in verse 3. He said, he will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. What are you saying? I'm telling you, the writer of the psalmist here said, not only is he the creator of the universe, but he is the one who sustains me. He is my confirmer. Lord, you see this verse tells us that the Lord will not allow your foot to slip or be moved. Why? Because let me tell you, the Lord knows how easy it is for us to slip back into sin and into discouragement. I don't care how long we've been saved. Folks, let me tell you, discouragement's going to come along sometime and smack you and I in the face. You're going to face some things that you don't think you're ever going to get over. But it's just a test. It's just a test. Look at your neighbor and tell them it's just a test. Glory to God. And I want to tell you it's time to pass the test. Praise God. When something's bigger than me, whew, I'm glad I got a God who's bigger than everything. And so do you. Come on now. He's a confirmer. He knows how easy it is for us to slip into that place. Lord of God, yet we got to remember that he is ever with us. And he's promised to sustain us with his presence and with his power. Hebrews 13 and 5 says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Matthew 28 and 20, lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the world. I want to tell you there have been times that I did not feel him with me. But you know what? He was still there, praise God. God because his word it promised that he will be he's our confirmer you see there are going to be times when you feel like giving up and giving in but we need to realize that he's lifted up us out of that miry clay glory to God of this world and he's established our goings I love that scripture man I talk I preach on that time and time and time again on sinful in Psalms 
41 through 3. I waited patiently for the Lord. This is David. I waited patiently for the Lord. And he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of the horrible pit. Can anybody testify with David? Come on now. He brought me up out of the horrible pit, out of that miry clay, and set my feet on a rock and established my goings. And again, he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. I want to tell you, glory to God, if he pulls you out of that miry clay, he does not mean for you to go back to that hog pit and back to that dirty place. He intends for you and I to live a life that is pleasing unto him and be a light in this world, praise God. Woo! He's our confirmer. The psalmist said he's not only my creator. He's not only my confirmer. He keeps me from falling. Woo! But he's my constant helper. So what are you talking about? Look at what he says. The last part of verse 3 and verse 4. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. What are you talking about, Pastor? I want to tell you, there are times, praise God, when we all grow weary and want to rest. There are times when we let down our guard and get caught napping. But let me tell you, the Lord never gets caught napping by the enemy. Praise God. He is ever awake and ever active on our behalf. No wonder David could say in Psalms chapter 3, I lay me down and I slept, though he's being pursued by Saul and Saul's throwing javelins at him and shooting arrows at him and wants him dead. In the midst of all that, David said, I know my God is able and I'm going to rest in him because because he's got my back, my front, and my sides. Praise God. He's my constant help. He doesn't weary. He doesn't tire. He doesn't fall asleep at the controls. Hey, man. You see, there's no need for us to worry. Hello. There's no need for us to fret. There's no need for us to lose one minute of sleep at any time because of the problems this problem or that problem or anything else. You see, God is always awake and is constantly on the job. What a blessing to know that we can depend on him. As all Lamentations 3 and 23 says, Great is thy faithfulness, praise God. The psalmist said, Oh, let me tell you about the source of my help. If that was all he said, Man, that'd be a great psalm, wouldn't it? This is all he talked about. That'd be a great psalm. But then he moves on to the second stanza of this verse, of this chapter. He moves on to the second point. He says, not only let me tell you about the source of my help, but let me tell you about the strength of my help. He said, I want to tell you Lord, he's not just a source. He's got some strength to back up what he does. Hey Amen. Verses 5 and 6. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. He said, what are you talking about? What's he saying? What are you saying, preacher? I'm telling you, listen, the psalmist said, let me tell you about the strength of my source. First of all, he protects me, and he'll protect you from all of our enemies. Praise God. Amen. He said, the Lord is your keeper. Look at somebody say, the Lord is my keeper. Hallelujah. You see, this verse tells us that the Lord is our keeper. And it also said that our shade, he's our shade upon the right hand. You see, the psalmist is telling us that God takes up a position to protect us where we are the most vulnerable. You see, we never know where our attack is going to come from. Sometimes we find ourselves attacked in areas where we're weakest. You see, the enemy knows where we're weakest because we tell him. And at other times we find that we're attacked in areas 
where we're the strongest. Look at Elijah. Elijah's renowned for his courage, yet he fled from a woman named Jezebel. Moses, great strength was his meekness. Yet in anger he smote the rock and was forbidden to enter the promised land. Abraham's great strength was his faith in the Lord. Yet he went into Egypt in pure disbelief and unbelief. Because he lied. The point is, you see, we'll be attacked and we never know where the attack's going to come from. But it, it never catches God off guard. You see, he's always ready to shield us and protect us from our enemies. The psalmist said, listen, I'm going to tell you, it doesn't matter what the name of the enemy is, what he looks like, or where he comes from. God will protect us, praise God. But not only will he protect us from our enemies, but I thought this was a little interesting right here. Praise God. He'll protect us from the elements. Well, look at what he said. Look at what he said. He said, the sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. Look at what the psalmist is saying. The psalmist speaks here of two possible sources of harm that are common to an ancient soldier out on the battlefield. The first one was sunstroke. Glory to God, you've been out in that battle for so long. You've been under the sun. You've been in the heat. Amen. That, that's a dangerous position, a condition where the body becomes overheated and shuts down. Lord God, and that condition can be fatal. Praise God. I want to tell you, I'm glad the Lord is our shade. I'm glad we can get underneath the shelter of the Almighty. He, by God, that devil may try to turn the heat up on us, but God's got his hand on the thermostat. Praise God. And won't let the devil do no more than he's allowed. Come on. But not only did he say he shaded us from the sun, but look at this other. He said from the moon. What, what, what's it got to do with the moon? The other is moonstroke. Moonstroke. You see, back in ancient days, they believed by the ancients to be just as dangerous as sunstroke. Moonstroke, unlike sunstroke, did not affect the body, but the mind. You see, in ancient times, mental illness was thought to be caused by the moon. This is where we get the word lunatic from. Oh, come on now. It refers to somebody who's got a mental dysfunction, disturbance. You see, the whole idea is this. While we're subject to attacks in our life, we're also subject to attacks in our body and in our mind. But it doesn't matter where it comes from. It doesn't matter who it comes from. It doesn't matter if they're after our body. It doesn't matter if they're after our mind. Lord God, God will guard us against the attack of in, from the enemy from the outside or the inside. You see, God, be sure of this. You need to be sure that God is aware of where you are and what's happening to you, and he will always be there to protect you. Glory to God. To guard you and give you the resources you need to stand in the day of battle. You see, God is our strong tower. Our greatest gift in troublesome times is to have him to flee to. Amen. Psalms 91 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He will deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He will cover me the me with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust his truth shall be thy shield and buckler my God aren't you glad we got him to run to aren't you glad we don't serve a weak God come on now David said it like this in Psalms 18 I, I, I just had to put it in here because this is, this is the way they start Psalms 18 off glory to God it goes the Psalm of David the servant of the Lord who spake unto the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of all of his enemies and from the hand of Saul. This is what he said. He said, I love, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. 
my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. Oh, what a description of the Lord. Not only do we have him as a good source, but glory to God, he has the strength to back up what he does. And then the third thing, when you come to the third part of this psalm, you find from verses 7 and 8, not only do we have the source of our help and the strength of our help, but we've got the security of our help. We've got the security of our help. Look at what he says. He said, the Lord shall preserve. Three times he says this word. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. What are you saying, preacher? I'm telling you, we don't, we've got a source who has the strength to keep us secure. Praise God. We are preserved from evil. Have you ever noticed how easy it is for us to sin? You see, they, you, you find on Sunday, but then these days of the week where we ain't in church and where we ain't in, around other Christians. You ever noticed how easy it is, glory to God, for us to sin? It, it seems like it requires no effort at all on, on our part. Why is that? I'll tell you why it is. It's because we were born with a sin nature. Glory to God. That was bent in that direction to sin. Number two, we like it. And number three, we're good at it. You got quiet? It's all right. It's my time to preach. But when I look at this, do you understand that the Lord understands we are just flesh and blood? The Word of God understands. Uh, the Lord understands. Uh, he said it like this. He said the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So when I look at this and I see where it says the Lord will preserve you from all evil. Folks, I want to tell you, the Lord wants to help us overcome evil in our life. If we have the desire in our hearts, He'll protect us from the evil one. Praise God. He wants to protect us, but we've got to have that desire to turn from our evil ways. What is that famous scripture we always preach? 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and, uh-oh, here's where it goes off the rails. Turn from their wicked ways. Wait a minute, whoa, 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 wait. He started off by saying, if my people. Mm -hmm. not, not the lost out here in the world. This is God talking now through the prophet. If my people. See, God knows what we do. There's not one thing hid from Him. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked way. Can I tell you? Glory to God. The, the, the fate of the United States does not hinge on an election. The fate of the United States does not hinge on the Congress. It does not hinge on the Senate. It hinges on the church turning from their wicked ways and praying and getting back right with God. If 
my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. Turn from their wicked ways. Seek my face. Then. That's a very important word. Then would I hear from heaven. You want to know why? I, I've been listening here lately. I don't know if any of y'all know Kent Christmas. He's a pastor in Nashville. He's been real big here lately on prophecy. Glory to God, prophesied at the first of the year about the things that was going to happen this year. Went to the National Prayer Conference in, in Washington that was just up there back a few weeks ago. Prophesied again. Praise God that God was going to bless the church in the next four years. Praise God. I hope that's true. But I want to tell you, glory to God, God can't bless us and won't bless us till we get right with him. Well, now, Pastor, are you calling us all sinners? No, I'm just telling you, I know how we are because I'm one. We let our emotions get the best of us. We let our attitudes take over. We say things that we never go back and apologize for. We hold grudges against people that we never go and ask forgiveness for. Ooh, come on now. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you the same thing Paul told the Corinthian church. Carnality is killing us in the church today. Because we want to, we say we want to do it God's way, but we'd rather have it our way more than anything. But the writer of this psalm said, listen, glory to God, God will keep you from evil. But it's got to be a desire on our part to, to say, Lord, here I am. I repent. Come on, can I tell you, repentance is not just for the rank sinner out there that's never found Jesus. Repentance is a church word for the church. It's for us to come back and stay in a right relationship with the Lord. I know this ain't popular preaching. Praise God. I ain't never, I, I ain't never been accused of being a popular individual. Praise God. But hear me. The psalmist said, he'll preserve you. He'll keep you from evil. But you've got to have a want to for him to do that. Glory to God. But not only that, he'll preserve us for eternity. Look at what he said from verse 8. And I'm going to close. Come on, give me some landing music. Praise God. He said, the Lord will preserve you. Preserve your going out and your coming in. Listen, from this time forth and even forevermore. What are you talking about? I want to tell you, we got a God in heaven who's big enough and strong enough and powerful enough to put every devil under our feet, to put every sin behind our back. Praise God. We got a God that's big enough, glory to God, to keep us. Hallelujah. I'm telling you folks, I'm glad we serve a God who said if we'll turn and we'll forsake our sin, that he'll cleanse us. If we'll confess our sin and forsake it and turn from it, he cleanses us and wash us clean. Amen. And put righteousness back in us. Hallelujah. He'll keep us. He'll hold us. Sometimes, though, I just think when problems that we go through, and I gotta say it again with this pandemic that we've been going through since the end of January, but really didn't start for the church till about March. Sometimes I think we've got to the place that we feel. 
like this thing is bigger than God. I want to tell you, folks, His Word still declares that by His stripes we are healed. Is this thing scary? Yes, it is. I'm not taking nothing away from it. Is this thing real? Oh, you better believe it is. I'm not taking nothing away from it. But is our, is our God bigger than COVID? Absolutely. Is our God greater? Absolutely. Hallelujah. You may not be dealing with COVID. You may be dealing with a family problem. You may be dealing with a health problem. You may be dealing with a financial problem. You may be dealing with a spiritual problem. Whatever you hang on that problem, whatever tag you put on it tonight, I want you to understand God is able. Stand with me. I haven't been doing it. Glory to God. 